As a popular YouTuber once said, turn off that pesky ad block. To which I'll respond and say, you know what, you should probably keep it on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, ad blocks are one of those things that are, that are you know, hot button type issue amongst content creators. A lot of those people definitely dislike it. Some consider it stealing from them. But I'm one of those people that, given today's video, I would rather lose a buck or two if it meant your computer safety. Now, of course, before I begin this, if you would like to support the channel or any channel you go to, go to your ad blockers, turn on the white listing feature, and help those channels out in any small way you can if you want to. But the reason why I said keep on that ad block is because the ad block can actually help save your computer. Now, today's video is all about malvertisements, which are rogue uh, advertisements that are sent out. Now, the world of advertisement is, you know, for the most part, pretty okay. But malvertisements are basically uh, basically services and, and types of attacks that use these uh, advertisements to attack or spy on you. So let's get into a case example real quick. You ever go to those shady websites? I'll give an example from me, Muda, right now. When I'm emulating video games, sometimes I might go to a website out there on the internet that has advertisements on it. You know, when you go to those download pages to get those ISO files or any program, you might notice they have like six or seven download buttons and they're all actually advertisements that take you to weird locations. So to have another example, if I go to a game that I want to get, for instance, a ROM file, I'll go to something like ROMs Mania, which will give me notifications that you probably shouldn't accept. And then the download link, while it gives you a zip file, will often push an EXE file that is a program that you don't really need. Stay away from this stuff. So thinking about it real quickly, ladies and gentlemen. That's an area of attack. See, malvertisements are basically advertisements that use very malicious ways to redirect users to other fake websites or actually infect you just by viewing the ad itself. So, getting into a case world example, ladies and gentlemen, when you view anything on the internet, when you view web pages, two of the things you gotta remember that are kind of a little dangerous and dodgy are Flash and Java. Now, Flash is uh, an old, very, very old uh, web tool that we use to view SWF animations, things like that. Um, we've switched from Flash mostly to like HTML5, but you're still going to find Flash out there on the internet. And Java is something that is used all over the world on millions and billions of devices out there. So when web pages use JavaScripting, it, it, it uses it to provide features to the end user, you know, make their site look better, but it has a darker side to it. See, when you add all these browser add ons, and you add all these plugins, you allow the browser to execute code on your computer. So long story short is if you view a web page that runs a flash animation, which you'll notice if you run something like Google Chrome or well, any modern day web browser, it'll actually ask you if you wanna run flash or Java applications. And unless you trust a website very specially, unless the website has proven its credibility, always respond with a solid no to those. Because if you don't, then you're gonna come up with situations that might as well take away your computer uh, and, and put it in the arms of someone dangerous and dirty. Now, even on a legitimate website, one that doesn't mean you any harm, can also be compromised. See, by a lot of their content delivery networks for these ads, they themselves can be compromised. See, a site can be 100% normal, but if you open up any news web page on the internet, you'll notice that ads start filling in. And when you have ad block attached to a computer, you'll notice that the ads aren't present and the website looks a little janky. It loads faster. So a lot of these websites come with ads, banners, whatever you want to call it preloaded. They can be audio files, video files, whatever. But sometimes an iframe can be dodged within these, uh, you know, just embedded within some of these banner advertisements or picture advertisements, and this will redirect you to another web page, a landing site for a malicious code attack. So you ever notice how sometimes you're browsing the internet and a pop-up will appear saying, hey, your Windows installation is corrupt, holy crap, click over here and fix it. Well, you're already, already under attack at that moment. See, browser vulnerabilities, for those of you who don't know, are basically exploits hidden within a browser that can be used to launch code through onto an actual computer. One of the earliest and most uh, well-known examples I can give it is the first generation of iPhones that had come out. When those were out, one of the most popular sites was jailbreak.me, if I'm not mistaken. And what this website did was, upon opening it in Safari, which was the only web browser on the iPhone 2, 2G, original iPhone at the time, and the 3G, you could go to this website, was it the 3G? I'm not sure, but you could go to this website and it would display a TIFF image which could basically launch the code on your iPhone and jailbreak you out of Apple's secure garden. And that's just how things come to be. See, these exist amongst many forms of, uh, of web pages and whatnot. These exist amongst many browser packages out there. And when you're typically going for a web browser, you should probably pick the web browser that's the most well-known out there and one that's heavily curated. 
One that I use primarily is Mozilla Firefox, not that I'm paid or anything by them, but I use Mozilla Firefox because it's pretty fast, it's gotten better over the years, and it's incredibly open source, which basically allows the community of developers around it all over the world to look through the code base, curate it, and it's kind of like doctors offering a second opinion, but more so for computers. There's also the Chromium project, which is where Google Chrome is forked off of, and the newer Microsoft Edge build. So if you want to secure yourself, use a browser that is well, first of all, open source, based off that at least, and is one that's constantly curated by a community out there. Because the more eyes you have looking into your software and, and repairing it, the better it is, the chances are the more secure you're going to get. It's why I use Linux primarily as an operating system, because while I don't think that Microsoft is inherently evil or something like that, I'm only going to use Linux because not only is it a more solid, stable operating system, but it's also open source and there are people that are constantly looking through it all the time. Now, that's a little tangent off right over there, but browser vulnerabilities can be used to exploit using these malvertising examples out there. One of the case examples that I actually got was from a family uh, you know, problem that was related to computers. Now, I have a Lenovo laptop over here, one that's like a relic from the old days. Like, we're looking at a gigabyte of RAM, <laughs> uh, a single core processor, and fucking... I don't even know. There are some people, I think, who are born when they started putting mandatory two processors in a computer or anything of the sort. Now, we've got a single core, one gigabyte laptop from back in the day, one of these Ultrabooks netbooks, one that I consider to be a stupid device. Like, you can't really even use this. Um, I have to, like, use it like a caveman or something. But long story short, this is coming with Windows 7, and we're not looking at Windows 7, like, updated Windows 7. This is an incredibly old build of Windows 7 that I was working on over here to try and fix. And not only was it Windows 7, but the web browser itself was, like, Internet Explorer 7, and a non-updated version. This system was as base as Windows 7 could get. It was missing service service packs, it was missing crucial security updates. This thing was literally bought from a store and never updated at all. So when I looked into this computer, I noticed that they had went to a lot of web pages, South Asian web pages that they could watch uh, movies and music, mu movies, listen to music, watch TV shows, political shows, things like that um, from India, Pakistan and whatnot. Now, these websites, while I don't think they were inherently evil, and I'm not going to list them because I don't want anybody going to them since this is how it occurred, had actually launched a, had actually exploited a browser vulnerability, which again isn't hard to do considering the fact that this thing hasn't been updated for over a decade now. They were able to exploit browser vulnerabilities and get into it and effectively launch ransomware. And ransomware that I couldn't f fix, we're talking about like CryptWall 2.0, something of the sort that had no decryptor fix out there. And even if it did, even if you would want to pay to have that ransomware gone, <laughs> there's just no way. It, it seems as though that the actual ransomers aren't even active at this point. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's a real-world example of a computer that had lost its way, all because not that they downloaded any weird software, not that they did anything inherently wrong, was because they never updated their browser, they never updated their system, they never had an ad block, they never had an antivirus, they never had anything to protect themselves from any situation. They went to a web page, it launched an application through their actual uh, program, or through their uh, Internet Explorer 7, and completely dominated their computer. It's a sad tale, but it's one that's going to happen. So, I think it's Internet Explorer 7 or 9, whatever, it's old. Nobody uses Internet Explorer, nobody really even uses Edge. You get the point. Now, the moral of the story, ladies and gentlemen, is one that I feel needs to be taken seriously. Now, I know that there's content creators who may not like Adblock and things like that, and this might be a kind of a hot take, but I actually support the use of ad blocking software. Um, like I said earlier, I would rather lose a buck or two if it meant your computers weren't to be infected uh, by any of this stuff because that ransomware that had occurred had my family friend not have actually had a USB key with backups on it, those files would have been completely gone and they were important files the last I checked on there. So had they, had they not backed those files up initially, this would have been a lost cause completely all because they went on a weird website. So use any content blocker of your choice. I use Adblock Plus or Pro, whichever one I call it. There's one built right into my Note 9 anyways. Um, I think it's also Adblock Plus. So use whatever you want, use what you're comfortable with, but block those ads as much as you can. Whitelist your favorite content creators if you feel they deserve your, you know, your advertising revenue that you would give to them legitimately, of course. And if you want to support websites, you know, that, that are publishing free content, because like I said, ads help us get free content out there. It's kind of the trade-off you have. So if you put on Adblock too much, 
your free content is going to start dwindling. So it's one of those give and take type scenarios, but whitelist as much as you can, but make sure you have some form of ad block allowed on your system. Because if you don't, that's the newest attack vector. That's the most popular attack vector these days, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm just here watching out for all y'all. That's all I'm gonna say, ladies and gentlemen. So get those pesky ad blocks enabled. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to sit back, relax. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to this fancy schmancy adult club and call it a day. <laughs> this is me, Mudhar, and I am out.